relaxation or sleep don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you like content like this please subscribe on the big red button also to keep up with notifications tap the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload uh, don't forget to comment down below if you like basically comment anything or just a comment about your video ideas and I play the piano why don't you go check out my music channel if that's the case all of this will be in the description now without further ado let's hop right into this first before I start the video I've always been a candle person so let's light this Sleepy voice. Who are you? Said the caterpillar. This, this 
was not an encouraging opening for a conversation. Alice replied rather shyly, I, I hardly know, sir, just at present. At least I know who I was when I got up this morning, but I think I changed. But I think I must have been changed several times since then. What do you mean by that? said the caterpillar sternly. Explain yourself. I can't explain myself, I'm afraid, sir, said Allison, because I'm not myself, you see. I don't see, said the, uh, said the caterpillar. I'm afraid I can't put more clearly, Alice replied very politely, for I can't understand it myself to begin with, and being so many different sizes in one day is very confusing. It isn't, said the caterpillar. Well, perhaps you haven't found it so yet. Alice, said Alice, but when you have to turn into a chrysalis, you will someday, you know, and then after that into a butterfly. I should think you, you'll feel a little queer, won't you? Not a bit, said the caterpillar. Well, perhaps your feelings may be different, said Alice. All I know is that, all I know is it would feel very queer to me. You, said the caterpillar contemptuously, who are you? which brought them back again to the beginning of the conversation. Alice felt a little irritated at the caterpillars making at the caterpillars making such very short remarks, and she drew herself up again, up and said very gravely, I think you ought to tell me who you are first. Why? said the caterpillar. Here was another puzzling question.
does not sit right, said the caterpillar. Not quite right, I'm afraid, said Alice timidly. Some of the words have gotten altered. It is wrong from beginning to end, said the caterpillar decidedly, and there was silence for some minutes. The caterpillar was the first to speak. What size do you want to be? It asked. Oh, I'm not particular as to size, Alice hastily replied. Only one doesn't like change so changing so often, you know. I don't know. Said the caterpillar. Alice said nothing. She had never been so much contradicted in all her life before, and she felt that she was losing her temper. Are you content now? Said the caterpillar. Well, I just shouldn't like to be a little larger, sir. If you wouldn't mind, said Alice. Three inches is such a wretched height to be. It is a very good night to be in. Upright as it spoke, I was exactly three inches high. But I'm not used to it, pleaded poor Alice in a piteous tone. As she thought to herself, I wish creatures wouldn't be so easily offended. <sighs> me, that's me. You'll get used to it in time, said the caterpillar, and it put the hookah into its mouth and began smoking again. This time, Alice waited patiently until it chose to speak again. and shook itself. Then it got down off the mushroom and crawled away into the grass merely, remarking as it went, one side will make you grow taller and the other side will make you grow shorter. One side of what? The other side of what? Thought Alice to herself. Of the mushroom, said the caterpillar just as she had asked, asked it aloud, and in another moment it was out of sight. Alice remained looking. Alice remained looking thoughtfully at the mushroom for a minute, trying to make out which were the two sides of it. And as it was perfectly round, she found this was a very difficult question. However, at last she stretched her arm round it, round it as far as they would go, and broke off a bit of the edge edge with each hand. And now. Which is which, she said to herself, and nibbled a little bit of the right hand, right hand bit to try the effect. The next moment she felt a violent blow underneath her chin. It had struck her foot. She was a good deal frightened by this very sudden change, but she felt there was no time to be lost, as she was shrinking rapidly, so she set to work at once to eat some of the other bit. Her chin was pressed so closely against her foot that there was hardly room to open her mouth, but there, but she did it as, at last and managed to swallow a morsel of the left hand bit. Come, my hands, my head's free at last, said Alice tone of delight, which changed into alarm in another moment, when she found that her shoulders were nowhere to be found. All she could see when she looked down was an immense length of neck, which seemed to rise like a stalk out of a sea of green leaves that lay far below her. What can all that green stuff be? said Alice. And where have my shoulders got to? And oh, My poor hands, how is it? I can't see you. She was moving them about as she spoke, but no result seemed to follow, except a little shake among the distant green leaves. As there seemed to be no chance of getting her hands up to her head, she tried to get her hand, her head down to them, and was delighted to find that her neck would bend about easily in any direction. Like a serpent, she had just succeeded in curving it down into a gracious zigzag and was going to divide it in among the leaves, which she found to be nothing, nothing but the tops of the trees under which she had been wandering. When a sharp hiss made her drop back in a hurry, a large pigeon has, had flown into her face and was beating her violently with its wings. Serpent! You screamed that! Screamed the pigeon! I'm not a serpent! said Alice indignantly. Let me alone. Serpent, I say again. Rip 
she thought there was no use in saying anything more until the pictures had finished. Yeah, you might as well do that if you're gonna learn what she's trying to say. As if it wasn't enough trouble, as if it wasn't trouble enough hatching the eggs, said the pigeon, but I must be on the lookout for serpents night and day. Why, I haven't had a wink of sleep these three weeks. I'm very sorry you've been annoyed, said Alice, who was beginning to see its meaning. And just as I'd taken the highest tree in the wood, continued the, pin, the pigeon, raising its voice to a shriek. And just as I was thinking I should be free of them at last, they must need come wriggling down, come wriggling down from the sky. Ugh, serpent. But I'm not a serpent, I tell you, said Alice. I'm a... I'm a... Well, what are you? said the Belgian pigeon. I can see you're trying to invent something. I, I'm a little girl, said Alice rather doubtfully, as she remembered that the number of changes she had gone through that day. A likely story indeed, said the pigeon in a tone of the deepest contempt. I've seen a good many little girls in my time, but never one with such a neck as that. No, no, you're a serpent. There's no use denying it. I suppose you'll be telling me next that you've never tasted an egg. I have tasted an egg, certainly, said Alice, who was a very truthful, truthful child. But little girls eat eggs quite as much as serpents do, you know. I don't believe it, said the pigeon. But if they do, why, then you're a kind of serpent. That's all I can say. This was such a new idea to Alice that she was quite silent for a minute or two, which gave the pigeon the opportunity of adding, you're looking for eggs. I know that well enough, and what does it matter to me whether you're a little girl or a serpent? It matters a good deal to me, said Alice hastily, but I'm not looking for eggs as it happens, and if I was, I should want yours. I don't like them raw. Well, be off then, said the pigeon in a sulky tone as it settled down into its nest. Alice crouched down among the trees as well as she could for her neck kept getting entangled among the branches and every now and then she had to stop and untwist it it's that long oh, Alice <laughs> after a while she remembered that she still held the pieces of mushroom in her hands and she set to work very carefully nibbling first first at one and then at the other and growing sometimes sour and sometimes shorter until she had succeeded in bringing herself down to her usual height. It was so long since she had been anything near the right size that it felt quite strange at first, but she got used to it in a few minutes and began talking to herself as usual. Come, there's half my plan done now. How puzzling all these changes are. I'm never sure what I'm going to do. I'm never sure what I'm going to be. From one minute to another, however I've got to, however I've got back to my right size, the next thing is to get into that beautiful garden. How is that to be done, I wonder? As she said this, she came suddenly open upon an open place with a little house in it about four feet high. sizes for many of these architecture buildings are... Wow! Goodness. Whatever lives there, thought Alice, it'll never do to come upon this size. Why I should be... Why I should frighten them out of their wits. So she began nibbling at the right hand bit again. And it and did not venture to go near the house till she had brought herself down to the right to nine inches high. Well, I hope, I hope this little video, um, I hope this video gave you some relaxation. I hope it put you to sleep, and if you are asleep right now, all I will say right now is good night. Hope you have a wonderful sleep, and happy drifting. Bye.